guys welcome back to another video so in this video we are going to be going over Cura support so these are going to be the settings i'm currently using on my ender 3 s1 pro um, now my S s1 pro has been modified with different types of cooling uh, solutions like a 40 20 blower fan and a 15 15 fan to cool off the heat sink as well as well as other things um, and also this this is implying that you're using um, the latest firmware or maybe a custom firmware like Thomas Tokas uh, Thomas Tokas uh, firmware for the S1 Pro. Uh, I believe these settings will also carry over to the S1 Plus and the S1 as well. Um, just make sure that you have your machine t uh, dialed in uh, to where everything's adjusted properly. Uh, your gantry is square and everything's adjusted like your V roller wheels if you're on those. Uh, make sure everything is operational and smooth as possible. So if something is not in spec or if it's out of whack, these type of supports might be hard for you uh, like in removing them or they might be failing a lot. So make sure you check that out um, before applying these settings to your printer. In this case, the test model we're going to be using is going to be a Benchy. I currently have everything reset to um, the stock settings. And in this video, we are going to be only going over my support settings. So we want to make sure everything, um, in this case, I'm on a layer height of 0.2. I'm using three walls and three top and bottom layers. Infill 20%, which I already infill. That's what I use all the time. You can use whatever you want there. And make sure you have your material settings to what you are going to be printing with. Um, in this case, um, I have tested this with uh, PLA and ABS as well, so this settings kind of works for both um, in regards to these supports we're going to be working with. So the supports we're going to be working with are going to be uh, Curious Tree supports. Now, I recommend you run a um, one of these tests, which is going to be a overhang test to see how your uh, printer can handle overhangs. In my case, uh, I ran tests and mine can actually do 80, uh, 70, actually no problem. 80 is kind of pushing it. Uh, so in my case, what I normally do is I will set my overhang, which is right here, to 60 degrees. That's what I've been working with all the time and it's been working pretty much great. Okay, now here are a couple settings. So just like this, uh, if we leave everything alone with an overhang of 60 degrees, I'm going to go ahead and generate a preview so you guys can see how these um, supports look. So they're pretty cool. If you haven't played around with them, this is kind of how they look like. So this is kind of like the benchmark for this printer. Um, to be honest, this is um, they'll work probably for you, but maybe not as well as you might think. But in regards to the settings, um, let's go ahead and go over them real quick. So this is going to be hopefully a quick video, but um, I'm just going to change the settings to what I currently use. You guys can follow along. If something does not work for you, feel free to change it. I try to explain what everything does um, as quickly as possible. So for the max over uh, the max maximum branch angle that I use is 45 degrees, um, and for this is just going to be basically you can just read over all of this if you want to learn more about this. But this is just how big of an angle your branch, your um, your branches are going to be set at and how how much they move around. Now, in regards to branch diameters, it's going to be like around the tip of your branch. So for these printers, anywhere between one and two works perfect. This will make sure that the tips of the branch are very thin so you can get into like more places as well. Um, the trunk diameter 25 is fine i have mine set to 20 though this will be the base of the support uh, so the bigger you make it the sturdier it's going to be but from in my case 20 millimeters works fine in regards to the branch diameter angle i have this set to five degrees so it's been working great for me and i do have support placement for everywhere preferred branch angle at 30 degrees these ones kind of go hand in hand the uh, maximum branch angle and the preferred um, branch uh, angle. So if you change this, it'll actually change this one to kind of match the uh, diameter to increase model. I leave it at one millimeters. Max, uh, minimum height to model, I leave it at three millimeters. Um, initial layer diameter. So 7.5 is fine and branch density at 30% is fine. If you increase this, it'll make more branches, which will let you place more interface. Um, well, uh, like a, a like a bigger interface uh, layer on top of it. Uh, but 30% seems to work just fine. 
we'll leave the tip diameter at 0.8 and limit branch reach. If you don't have any of these settings, just make sure that you go uh, to your uh, options right here to the top right and make sure you have everything set to all so you get all the settings. Um, so moving on, optimal, um, the optimal um, branch range, I do leave it at 30 millimeters. Okay, this one will stay the same on model if required for wrist preference. Support overhang, again, this is going to be up to you on how your cooling solution is. 60 degrees might not work for you, so you might want to lower it down. Okay, now support pattern. This one doesn't really matter since we don't use, we're not going to be using any um, support density. But in case you do have to add anything, I like grid a lot. So grid would always be my preferred uh, for this part. And in regards to the support brim width, so this adds a bit of a brim to your supports. Um, this one, I have it set to 10 millimeters, so it would actually make a brim. Um, and you can actually increase that to kind of match your branch uh, trunk um, diameter. So the full trunk gets a whole layer um, on the bottom itself. So I'm actually going to show you how that works. So and we're going to actually see what the settings we've made so far have affected the 3D model. So if you notice, these, branch, these branches are a lot smaller now. And the the support brim width is what adds to this here on the bottom. So it makes the supports a little bit more rigid so they don't fall or peel off the, the build pretty quickly. So if I put this back to what it was at, I believe, 4 millimeters, it's not going to add, and you're, you're going to see a gap right in the middle of the, um, of the branch supports on the trunk. So if you notice, there's now a circle there. Um, and that's going to be a little bit of a, of a failure point. So that one, you can leave it at the same width as your trunk, just to make sure everything gets properly seated. And it does. It has less of a, of a risk of falling off or failing along the print. So now it's full. OK, so let's go ahead and move on. Now, the support Z distance. Um, this one here, uh, you want to leave it at your layer height. You can get away with 1.5 if you want to have like a little bit of a cleaner um, support. Uh, when you take off the support from the from the print, if you put it at 1.5, it will be a little bit cleaner. 0.2 works the best though, uh, and making it easy enough to remove, uh, but yet not too bad, so you don't lose a lot of quality. Of course, anything you print over supports, it's going to have a bit of a quality degradation on that. So uh, in my case, I just leave these at 0.2 for the bottom and top uh, distance as well. Uh, support x, y distance, 0.8 is fine. Um, everything else, um, I'll leave it like that. Now, the minimum support area, I do leave it at 0 millimeters. Uh, so you get support at almost everywhere you can. Um, everything else, I'll leave it uh, checked on the enable support interface. Support interface thickness, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, and 0.2 for the interface resolution now here's where I kind of get a little bit um, into this um, and some of you might this might work for a lot of you this might not work for some of you but the support interface densities so support interface densities is how much of an interface like a grid pattern it's gonna have at the very top of the support uh, so in this case the one that I care about the most is the roof I actually have this set to 90% what this does is that the the interface layer that connects the um, the, the support to the 3D print itself is going to be a lot more dense, meaning that it's going to give you a bit of a cleaner interface. So if we look here, um, this is at this blue spot, this um, these blue lines here is the interface. This is at 90%. If I move it to back to 33%, you're going to notice these that grid pattern is it's a lot wider is thicker, which when you take off a 3D print, it does it does leave it a little bit less uh, less clean. So if you notice, these are now a lot thicker. So the interface layer, I used to always keep it like that, but I started messing around with it. I left it at 90%, and honestly, that's been working very well for me. Um, also for the floor support density, I do leave it at 70%, uh, just because it gives it more of, a, of, a, of an interface when you're, th this one is for when you're adding a support on top of an already 3D printed part. 
that will be connecting to something else on the on top of the 3d print so that one i leave it at 70 just to make sure it gets a uh, pretty good um interface as well reducing the failure the, just reducing it fail uh, the ability of it failing down the line and um this is so far how we're looking so it's looking a lot better than it did earlier um, I do see some things we need to add like for example if you notice these tips they don't have any interface layers so they're kind of just like supporting it without really touching the model um, and I'm gonna show you how to fix that here in a second so um, like I mentioned interface support pattern I do leave everything for a grid and this right here the minimum support interface area this is where a lot of my um, failures came from when I was 3d printing like large objects because if you notice uh, these supports, they're not touching the actual 3D print. There's no, like, if you, if you notice these blue lines, these blue lines are actually touching uh, between the the support, this is the interface, and then there's a 3D print. Uh, because this is set to 10 millimeters, and this is a very small print, it's not going to it's not going to give you any inter interface uh, layers in between. So what I do is I bring that all the way down to zero. Now, after I slice the, the 3D print, it's going to generate the interface layers on those tips of those supports, which is going to make everything a lot more stable. If you notice, now we have interface um, layers in between the prints. These are going to basically hold on to the Benchy itself, and they're going to peel off once the 3D printer is done, of course, and you can peel those off. And it's going to give you a much cleaner uh, surface, and it's less prone to failure. Um, and that's uh, basically it. That, that's the last step I would do. Um, these settings, of course, you're going to have to kind of work your way around them, see what kind of works for you, what doesn't work for you. You might be able to get away with more angle. Uh, however, I do recommend every time you print with tree supports, one quick thing is that you should always add a brim. My brims are always five millimeters thick, and this will just ensure that your print doesn't peel off mid print. Just gives you a lot more security. So this is what it's gonna look like with a brim, even better, right? So it's gonna be secure. So yeah, that, that's gonna be this video. That's gonna be the support settings I use. Um, feel free to try it out, tweak them as you can. Start with something small like a Benchy and um, let me know what you want me to cover in the next video. Hope you all have a great day, bye.